Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in, in the previous session, we have seen the Java buzzwords, so that we call it as a features. In this session, let us have a look on the whoops concepts. So what are the whoops concepts? Object Class Abstraction Encapsulation Inheritance Polymorphism so this we call as oops concepts now let us see one by one first what is meant by object so an object is defined as a real world entity so whatever the thing we are seeing in the real world that can be treated as an object so this object is a real world entity And this object consists of so properties and the task performed by task performed by this object. So whatever the real world entity which is having these properties and the tasks, some tasks to be performed, those we call as an object. Let, it, let us take an example. human human being is also an entity I, I mean it's an also an object so human consists of properties like name so color height and etc so these are the properties so what this human can do the task what are the tasks can be done by this human walk run, read, write, etc. So these are the tasks can be performed by this human. So we can consider this human as a object. Right? Hope you understood. So object is a real world entity which is having the properties and some tasks that can that it can be performed. Right. Now what about the class? So class is a blueprint that object should object follows. That object follows. So it is a blueprint that an object follows. So without the class, object is not there. So this class consists of n number of objects, number of objects. consists of number of objects and object can be defined as instance of a class instance of a class so that means object will follow the prototype defined by this class example let us take a student student in a class student in a classroom so what are the properties so properties or a variables, we can say them as a variables. So properties of a student. One, student name, student roll number, and student date of join, date of join, right? So this is a class and all the objects which are defined by this class should follow this prototype. 
so that for example a student in a class there are n number of students every student can be considered as an object which follows the same prototype and one of the tasks to be performed by the student read write play right so every student can have three properties read write and play every student will be having the three properties name roll number and some date of join so whatever the objects created through this class will follow the same structure that means objects so student consists of a number of objects so student class consists of some abc the name of a student abc some def some ghi so abc will be having name roll number date of join name roll number date of join similarly ghi so here abc def ghi are the names name of a student let it be like sandeep saradi and uh, some suresh roll number and date of join and for every student we will follow some properties some read write and play so <coughs> excuse me these three properties can be done i mean invoked by this abc and these properties can be applied for def and these properties can be done by ghi so an object is an instance of a class and a class is a blueprint that the object should follow right so a class consists of n number of objects many number of objects hope you understood this object and class because our java programming completely deals with these two things class and object for everything we will create a class and we will create an object so a class cannot run the methods of another class directly so one class of methods cannot be invoked by the another another class so in order to access the methods of another class one class should create its own object so simply we can say a classes cannot communicate with each other but in order to communicate with each other object should be created so for every communication object should be created so if class a and class b wants to communicate so here the communication means invoking the methods of one class by another class so every class is having the methods right so task so invoking those methods or tasks from one class to another class is called a communication and this cannot be done between two classes and this can be done only between objects so in order to communicate two classes first their instances should be generated and through those instances those the two classes will be communicated so hope you understood this thing the class and object next abstraction abstraction means showing only essential parts only essential parts and hiding the implementation details this is called abstraction this can be achieved in this java programming just the best example so if you download an uh, android application from the play store so we will get a dot apk file right dot apk file or you can download a software so that we can get dot exe file and if you run this exe file we can get the software and we can use the software 
but here we can't see the packages or methods or functions which are used to create this exe file that means all the implementation part is hiding and only the essential part is visible right so this is the best example so similarly if you download an application from android play store you will get a dot apk file but you will not get the methods or packages or any functions which are written to generate this dot apk file so all the implementation details will be hidden right so this type of applications can be done in java programming that we call it as a abstraction or a data hiding so i hope you understood this abstraction next one so object class abstraction now encapsulation encapsulation so this means binding variables and the methods under single entity binding the variables and methods under single entity so see for a understanding of the right here so a class is having three parts one is the name of a class so this is a class here we will write the variables and here we will write the methods similarly object is also having the name variables and methods Sim simply we can say student is a class having the variables name roll number and a date of joining and the methods read write okay and a play right so this is a class so here we are writing the variables and these are called variables and this we call as methods right these are called variables these are called methods so here we are binding these variables and methods in a single entity we call it as class or object so object is also having the same structure that means one class will be having in roll number character name and similarly the read method write method so one class consists of variables and methods right so this is called encapsulation so hope you understood this one next coming to the next concept inheritance inheritance so what is meant by inheritance acquiring the properties of one class to another class acquiring the properties of one class to another class simply we can say it as parent class and a child class so child class will acquire the properties of parent class right child class will be having acquiring the properties of parent class so this we call it as base class or we can call it this child class will be called as 
derived. So a derived class is a class which is derived from the base class. Derived class. Or we can call this parent as super class. And this child class as subclass. Right? So acquiring the properties of one class to another class. So here acquiring the properties of parent class to the child class. So this, this concept we call it as inheritance. So here there are uh, different types of inheritance, right? So we will have a single inheritance multi-level inheritance Hierarchical inheritance. So let us see the basic introduction, then we will move on by one by one, right? So we will see one by one concept in the depth. Now, in this session, let us cover the introduction of all these object oriented concepts. So we can have these three types of inheritance single inheritance, multi level, and hierarchical. So this is called inheritance concept. Next. Coming to the polymorphism. So performing the same task, same task in different ways. In different ways. That is called as a polymorphism. Here, task means a method. Method. So, invoking the method in different ways. For example, if we are having uh, a, a program for adding of two numbers, we can write add. Simply, we can call add without any parameters. We can call add with int a, comma int b. Right. So two methods. So both will perform the same task, but implementation is diff different. Here we are not passing any arguments, and here we are passing only, I mean, two arguments, right? Then this type of implementation we call it as a polymorphism. Let it be. Uh, one more example I will, I will explain. So I am having the method called draw polygon draw polygon so this draw polygon can be anyone so we can draw circle oh, sorry sorry it's a polygon so we can draw square we can draw rectangle we can draw a triangle Right? So both, all the three are the polygons. All the three are polygons. Right? So here just I am implementing draw polygon and that draw polygon can be square, rectangle or triangle. That means implementing this task in different ways. This is called polymorphism. So this can be achieved in Java by achieving, by implementing method overloading method overloading right and method overriding so in the further sessions we will see what what is meant by this method overloading and method overriding so with this we can implement compile time pile polymorphism and with this, the runtime polymorphism. So we can achieve the compile time polymorphism by implementing method overloading. And we can achieve this runtime polymorphism by implementing method overriding. Right? So we will see one by one in the further sessions. Right? Hope you understood the basic concept of this polymorphism. Right? So these are the concepts of object-oriented programming. So object class abstraction 
encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. <coughs> so, if you are having any doubts regarding this OOPS concepts, feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so that I will definitely try to clarify all your doubts. And if you really understood my sessions, share my sessions with your friends and like my sessions and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much.